Yeah. Main our guest speaker is in the house. Come on, come on. Now our guest speaker is the CEO. Yes, of Success Africa, or Success Africa, which is an HR development firm. He is a motivational speaker Mwogezi. and a success coach. Committed to enabling organizations and individuals to maximize their potential. Hallelujah. Amen. Our speaker is a training consultant for the British Council since 2004. He has successfully consulted for other organizations like Absa Bank, World Vision, World Division, MTN, MTN, UN agencies, the World Bank, Coca Cola, Coca Cola, and many others. And anywhere in this market, if you need to get to him, you look for the merchant of success. So men of revelation, put your hands together and please make welcome Mr. Ethan Mussolini. Mussolini. Thank you, Mr. Maweje. I've come with uh, Mr. Isiko's notes. Eh? So that's <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Mr. Maweje, with that energetic introduction. Thank you so much. And can we also give a huge round of applause to this interpreter? Eh? <laughs> How he manages to interpret things word by word quickly. No, no wonder he has not put on weight because, I mean, it. It requires a lot of energy to, to do all this work. Eh? <laughs> but by God's grace, here he is. God is good. And all the time. Fantastic. Amen. Then let's pray before we get uh, started. Dear Lord, dear Lord, we thank you. You are the creator of heavens and earth. You keep our hearts beating and we breathe every single day. For all these years, we've never paid you anything. And yet, you keep our hearts beating and we breathing. It's a priceless gift. Even when sometimes we don't seem to be grateful, please, please forgive us because at least the gift of life alone is good enough for us to be thankful. You know that men are leaders. Teach us to be leaders. We thank you for whoever is organizing these events. We thank you that this sanctuary was dedicated to you. And may everyone who comes here is transformed forever. And as we start this talk, let your wisdom flow through me. Because I'm simply your servant. See who gives me the, the brains. So may I be obedient to what you want me to say. And to focus on what you want us to say. May we be transformed. Speak to our minds. Speak to our hearts. We may be transformed forever. And that we go forth and transform others out of the animation. We thank you. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say yes. Amen. All right. Fantastic. Please have a seat. Where to lead it? I want us to give... Uh, had we given Mr. Isiko another round of applause? We did. We did. Okay, fantastic. Okay, yes. I found your presentation very short, in snappy, in but mm. very powerful. In 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 zayo, uh, nyimpi, so, kumutwe, so I'm hoping that whoever is recording can share these uh, insights because those are priceless insights. So, 
So I want to talk about work life balance in these modern times. Nyenda kuogera ku ngeri jo balancing amo bulamu obo kola no bulamu bwa bulijo mu bisera bino bitulimu ebiri wakati. But first of all also let me also thank whoever does the technology because typically I would be turning aside you know to look at the slides and yet now I have the screen in front of me that's fantastic. But it's really calling galo na kola technology no so I appreciate that. Ntiseta ga kuchuka ngenda kulaba ku mutimba gono guli oguli wa Guru. Okay. So, but before that, you might be looking at me and wonder, who is this guy going to speak to us? So, so let me see how I can compress my, my life story quickly. I was, I was born in a very humble background. Uh, in, a, in a place called Ruti. Ruti, Ruti. Ruti is three kilometers in Barra Kabale Road. Anyone knows a place called Ruti by any chance? Ruti? Yeah, so it's, you see, no one, is, no one knows. So that's, that's how challenging it is. So, uh, most of my life, I grew up in Omuzigo. In, uh, in one room. Okay. And my father was a tailor. He had two years of schooling. But he was also wise. It's what we call natural wisdom. So he taught me things like make friends, work hard, be excellent, greet elders, which I upgraded to mean greet everyone. Because I also believe that you just never know. You just need to say hello and then your life can be transformed. Like <laughs> He, he also told me to be honest. Not, not to lie, not to cheat. To be honest because character is very important. That skill takes you to the top, but character keeps you there. So, I lost my mother when I was nine years old. I've been a victim of jiggers, bed bugs. I know what it means to live on one meal a day at about four years. And I'm just sharing this with you because sometimes you might see me in a suit and you're thinking I was born in Kololo. Wapi, <laughs> I swear. But <laughs> Luckily, I was doing well in school by God's grace. And for some reason, I always had hope. And it's not because I had motivational speakers around me and all this. I really, from my heart of hearts, I believe it was God and the angels always encouraging me, telling, speaking to me that things will get better. So I always had the hope that things will be better. So I did well in school, uh, in senior four, P7, senior four. The most educated person, by the way, in my family was a P7 graduate. Not family, but a clan, family, a clan. So, so that's that's the that was the reference point. Not the family, but the whole clan. So, but my father, the other trick he had also taught me, which I would encourage you to adopt, he said that wherever you go, speak up. Speak up. Make yourself known. And I also believe, if I may take a detour a bit from my story, sometimes as, as Christians, we mistake this concept of being meek to just be keep quiet to hide not to speak up but you see even Christ said that if you have a light. You don't hide it. So that's what Christ said. So if you're the givers of light, so if you have light in you, let it shine. Let it go out. Announce. It does not mean showing off and say, hear how great I am. But you shine your wisdom. Just like we had Dr. Uh, Isiko here, he was Isiko. bragging, but he was sharing his wisdom. He was shining his light. I'm sure someone saw him someone say, Doctor, can you come and share with us? So my father told me, wherever you go, speak up. Make yourself known. If, not, if nothing, at least cough. Okay. The, the coughing, that is my addition. But, but at least you know, make yourself known. Because people will not know you until you make yourself known. So therefore, in senior five, that was way back in 1994, there were some of us who are old enough 
there was something called constituent assembly debate. Which was to usher in the current 1995 constitution. And they brought, even the children had a slot. So each district had to send two representatives. So I competed and I was among the two people who represented in Barra district. Mind you, it was my first time to participate in a debate competition in all the five years in high school. So I we saw an soka. advert on the wall and I said, let me participate. So ladies and gentlemen, when you feel your heart is at peace, just listen. You never know. God could be speaking to you. So I just followed my heart, participated one, and it transformed my life. Because by coming to Kampala, all of a sudden, whereas I had very low confidence and self esteem Team. Now mm. my confidence and self-esteem was <coughs> shot through the roof. And that also reminds me that one of the ways to boost your confidence and self-esteem is, is ask God to show you what your gifts and talents are. Because because that's e what will open e what, are the, what are the, those gifts that you have? So from then on, shortly after that, my father died. And now I was an orphan. And my father's friends who contributed money for me to finish A levels, and by God's grace, made it to my career university on government sponsorship. Hey, so I, I thank God for that because had it not been government sponsorship, there is no one would be standing here. Yes. In front of <laughs> And again, I made myself very visible <laughs> while at the university. university. So someone saw my talent <laughs> and they recommended me to go to, my, to uh, UK <laughs> represent <laughs> Uganda at the Commonwealth Youth Forum <laughs> in 1997 <laughs> as, as a 20-year-old. <laughs> now, some of you might be thinking, ah, you, you are representing the country. Maybe it's because you are from the West. <laughs> Now, let me tell you something. By the time I arrived in Kampala, the most influential people I knew were my three uncles. Selling second-hand shoes in Owino. In, including the most educated, the P7 graduate. So surely they had no hand in calling someone or pushing someone to push to go to London. So I did not have the so-called connections as we do it. But, but a few years ago, I discovered something that I share. I had the God connection. When God is connected, God will open doors that you have no clue about. That you have no idea about. Your job is to be obedient. And most crucial, to use your talents and gifts. So for me, my talent and gift was speaking. King. So I kept using it, and that's how God saw me, and I know someone saw me through the gift. So whatever it is, whether it is baking or playing drums, you just never know. The, the other turning, yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. And then, so... The another turning point was in 1998. I was seated in church the way you're seated. The late Dr. Gerard Serwaj was preaching. About never giving up. And he talked about never giving up. And in my spirit, I felt like God telling me, that's what we need in Africa. Someone who, someone who can give people hope. So I knew I had a gift in speaking. In, and a gift in encouraging people, mm. and I said that should make it a motivational speaker. So, so that's when I declared myself as a motivational speaker. Way back in 1998. And those of you who are old enough, you know there was no industry called motivational speaking. But again, if God gives you an idea, you run with it. You are God enough. And first track today, you've heard my story. I've been in 25 countries. Speaking. Now, Kakati, it's not because I'm perfect. Sinti ntukiride. Madam, I thought I would share my story. Because 
sometimes, again, like when we appear here and in a suit, you might think that, but just to also give hope, because I can read the room, some of us are from a humble background. So never lose hope, my friend. My belief is, if you are, if you are alive and kicking, you are not yet finished. You are not yet finished. Things can turn around in an instant, in a twinkling of an eye. So never lose hope. Have faith. You and God are enough. So if nothing else you, you remember from what I said, at least hopefully my story will remind you to never lose hope. Now we can talk about work-life balance. So that the key is not prioritize what is on your schedule, but schedule priorities. But what's most... But it's also very interesting how God works. Isn't it interesting that, you know, Mr. Isiko came first to talk about the plan. <laughs> and now my first slide is talking about priorities. <laughs> so you need to know what's most important to you. And of course it comes with a plan. By the way, by the way you either have a plan to work on or you'll be used to work on someone else's plan. So what are you working on? So here are some quick thoughts. What if your family is not well? Does it affect your job? And why? So I like that quote that you never feel truly satisfied with work until you're satisfied with life. So you have to look at life in general, the big picture. So the first slides are a little quick because there are some key things that I want to pay attention to. But how, how did I get passionate about this concept of work-life balance? So when uh, my friend Peter Okodewu here, Peter Okodewu called, when he hinted to me, I said, you know, work-life balance, that I can talk about comfortably. Because I've been passionate about it for years. So a couple of years ago, it was around 2004, Five or six. I was not feeling well. So I went to a medical doctor. They checked everything in my body. They could not find anything. So he started asking me about my lifestyle. That's the time we used to travel around the continent to do training. I was, uh, you know, under British Council, there was a training happening. In the I couldn't find any challenge. But then he said, you know what? You are stressed. So that's the only problem. For the first time, I didn't know that stress can be a disease. So then, for the first time, I booked a hotel to go to Entebbe. And for the first time, I was away from my laptop. For two days. And it's then that I discovered that when Azulida, you have to remember to take care of yourself. Just working without paying attention to your life can be disastrous. As a matter of fact, I know of a certain professor who died because of stress. He, he was earning a lot of money, but he was never resting and died out of so just be aware of that. But please note that should not be an excuse not to work. Because now you might say, hey, now you know you need to relax. So, no, you have to earn the relaxation. You work first, then you rest. Okay, so please take note of that. Then, again, it's work life balance. Amen. So uh, yeah, because I'm not seeing the. Mm. Okay, so you need to be to pay attention to having a balance between the demands of career and personal life. That's Kat, what you need. You know, could take a take of Bulunji. Even to Molimu Jobi Kubanja, at no Bulambo Okay, mm. so here are some. 
key mindsets to have. There's the mindset of busy. And there is a mindset of balance. But also I have to put a disclaimer. The idea of balance, like the way you're seeing it there on the screen, is not very important. There is no person who is 100% balance. Because there are some times whereby it calls for you to stretch more. If, for example, you are at work and there is a deadline for something to be submitted in the next 48 hours, you work because that's the requirement in that moment. But then when you're done, you see how to rest. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to share with you general principles that help you with work life balance. But, but there is nothing of perfect balance. So sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes there are those moments. But then over time, you are able to say, okay, relatively I've been balanced. Okay. So here, here are some mindsets. Number one is Esoka. growth. Learning growth or learning mindset. So first of all, give yourselves a round of applause for coming to learn. That's a good thing. Okay. Because you can't just feed on just the bread alone, as Christ said. So I believe I should put you on get you. I wish I could get that clip yeah. of when you are talking about you invest in a business and you forget to invest in the person in the business. Yeah. And that's the world I'm in, which is coaching. I yeah. always yeah. tell people, people spend a lot of money on setting up, they forget the people who are running the thing. Mm. It's, just, it's just like investing in a wonderful body of the car, wonderful tires, wonderful lights, wonderful you know, windscreens, but with a broken engine. It won't move. You are the engine. And now that engine, you grow it by learning. The second key is you have to be flexible and adaptive. I like the word modern times. The times are calling, you know, the times are changing. I'll give you an example. The, these days I've been using Uber. So when I noticed that the time was a bit tight, like today, today when I was coming, I could not use Uber. There is a gentleman I know called uh, Godfrey. Godfrey. He is so brilliant at figuring out shortcuts. When it comes to Kampala, he's so brilliant. Meaning he's always on his toes. So he's not flat-footed. But he's on his toes. See, when you're on your toes, you mm. can turn around You can turn around easily. Yeah. You can turn around easily. And so because of traffic, he could not, he could not even pass the other side. Someone said, said are you going to pass the room? I said, no. I will show you where you are. You, 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 will, you will see us arriving. And before we pass it, then we will see I arrived way before yeah. 6 o'clock. So why did he get business compared to other people? Because, because, he, because he was he's adaptive. He, he knows, knows which buttons to press. He knows where to go. If this is blocked, he knows where to go. When he goes, he knows to go. But if for you, you are only thinking, ah, for me, the only thing I know 
Bobogans Siva Kumain is drumming. Then what happens when there are no drums? Then you can't eat. Then you'll be stressed. I met a gentleman recently, he told me that his expertise was switch for telecoms. Telecom companies. I said, okay, and then the company he was working with closed, which was uh, uh, Orange. So I said, so what are you, what, what are you planning to do? He's like, man, for me, the only thing I know for 25 years is switch. My friend, you don't need one switch. It, you need several switches. Switch, Just the switch same way you see this building, it has, it has different switches. Switch Depending on the needs. These guys can switch on something for the backlight. So you need multiple switches to switch with the times. Otherwise, then you get stressed out. And you can't function properly. And all you can do is to the and your woman. Do you know who, who is the leader is here? I am the man. Man is one switch. What makes you a real man is the capacity to be adaptive and multi-skilled with abilities. And also, let's also remind you that manhood is not just about producing kids. Because even a 14 year old guy can, produce, can make a woman pregnant. What makes a man, a man is a responsibility. Can you take charge? Can you take care of your children? Can you take care of the responsibilities of Can you solve problems? That's what makes you a man. That's a man for modern times. That's a man with the less stress. <laughs> okay. Progress, not perfection. That we are all perfect, imperfect, and that's okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. So the key thing is, are you getting better today? One of the wisest men I, I respect, the business partner to Warren Buffett. Um, he said. Um, Sleep with less ignorance than you had the previous day. Okay, okay. The other one is divine appointment. That to achieve God's purpose for you, it's, it's also about making sure that you can make things happen. And of course, you can't make them happen if you are not balanced. The other thing is, the other thing is to have an abundance mindset. Do not limit yourself. Looking back at my career, I limited myself. I am 46 years old now. There are some younger people I've seen who are doing bigger and bigger things. It's because someone did not advise me about this course. I only thought about Uganda and the region around me. But what if I had thought global? Then things would even be much, much bigger. So my advice to you is, especially with the digital tech, with technology and all this, we should think at a global level. To dominate the earth. I believe technology is meant to be used by men and God, mainly by godly men and godly women to make a difference in the world, a positive difference. But because there are other people who have wrong thoughts and they are using the media for thoughts. Okay, so now it looks like I need to be super fast because <laughs> <I'm saying. laughs> So what could hold us back? Number one, in, improper planning and prioritization, which, which, which my brother has talked about. Second, laziness and procrastination. I was in one of the churches. It 
talking to women. I was invited to speak to women. So the pastor of that church made a comment that I really liked. This is what she asked me. I mean, this, this is the insight she, she gave me. Said, no, I want you to talk to these women. Not always depend on men. Financially. Because how can a woman with two hands, two legs, and just mentioning that you don't have money that you're waiting for your husband? Unfortunately, we have men with two hands, two legs, saying there is no money. So God gave you a brain, gave you hands, gave you legs. What else do you want? Do you want God to stuff money in your pocket? I believe the real miracle is the life. The the that you can breathe and think. Many, when I was about the age of 29, I met a professor from Chambogo University. He said that the word how many of us wish that we, if we had more capital, would start a business? But we have a single capital, a single single business. Temutia. So, anyhow, we wow. Look, you've talked about that, it appears. Eh? Mm -hmm. Have you talked about it? I'm seeing the laughter in the room. Mm -hmm. You haven't? Eh? Mm -hmm. So, a medical doctor told me, uh, not a medical doctor, a professor said, oh, no, the, no, word, no, the, no, the no. word capital is from the Greek word caput or capitas, which means head. Which I can see my brother is sick or knows. Head. Mm. So, when you say I don't have capital, but all you're saying capital. is that I don't have a brain. Sina wongo. So that's why yes, when someone's head is chopped off, God forbid, they say he was decapitated. The, the capital was removed. So my friend, you and I have the capital. We have the capital. Have the capital. Capital. In fact, let's pray. Dear, say, dear Lord, help me to maximize this capital. To provide solutions. To create innovations that have never been created before. To demonstrate your wisdom, your provision, and divine abundance. So help us, God. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> so let's work. I can see that you see there is that you reap what you sow. If you are sowing laziness, you won't get anything. Procrastination is something is a dream stealer. And I am not a perfect person either. I can tell you the number of opportunities I've missed because I waited another day. Because I waited another month. Because I waited another year. So my friend, do not let that what I've gone through to go through the same. Next, is mistaking business for productivity. What, what do I mean? Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're producing anything. Someone can go here, they are sweating, running up and down, but are you really producing? Because you're at work, you're busy. But where are the results? Where are the results? What counts are results? But not how much sweat you have around you. The other challenge is people pleasing. Part of what will stress you is not to learn to say no. There, there are moments you have to learn to say no. And sometimes I've found myself saying yes to many people and found myself in problems. Because I love serving people. And as Christians, we are told that. But also remember, the more you take care of yourself, the more you can take care of others. And every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So beware. Not creating blocks of time for what matters. For example, do you have a particular time for exercise? 
Do you have a particular time for family? Do you have a particular time for learning? You're quiet now. So here are some key strategies that I'm going to run through quickly. Number one, priorities. We have talked about that. Create boundaries, boundaries of each life aspect. Learn to say no. So I've talked about, for example, why should people be talking to you about 10 p.m.? Unless it's business or a family member. But, but you're there. Hey, brother. Hey, Munange. Now you're talking for another full hour or two. You get off the phone at midnight, but what have you talked about? Hey, Munange. Bizibu. Awaka. Nawo. Bidaba. Hey, Kakati. Kakati. You're there. Rugambo. Nemunyumia. Mm. is very important. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> don't worry. Remember, I'm also cylinder like you. So we can connect. Don't worry. Hallelujah. <laughs> You see, what are you feeding your mind? If you're there, listening, you will sleep with infufu in your head. And then what will you produce at work? What will you produce in your life? Track your time versus... Uh, per, so what, what, how are you using your time? I'm using your time. So, so, so recently, my, my coach challenged me to always track time. How much time am I spending on kids? So one kids? of the best ways you can do is start tracking your time. So the last one hour, how much... How much what did you do? What were you doing? When I started tracking, I was shocked. I'm still not yet there. I was shocked. I was shocked. The other key thing is harness technology to simplify your work. And again, use technology for, to be productive, to e do good things. And not just to share. You know there are people who are good at forwarding negative e things. Where is the world going? Forward. No forwarding. No forwarding. The gospel according to bad news. Yeah, That's what you're spreading. Evaluate your work-life balance daily. This one I'm not perfect. So I have to be very honest with So at least on a weekly basis, track that. On a weekly basis, I can, have, I can give you a picture, but e, not but, but, but that's the ideal. The other one is mindfulness, meditation, and reflection. Reflect. Spend some time reflecting. Have time about yourself. Reflect about your life. Where am I? Okay. When we say meditation, it's not just about those other, the way people think. Even the Bible talks about meditating upon the word of the Bible Lord. So here are some skills you need. Number one, the time management. Time is not money, it's your life. You can replace money. But you can never replace the, the last second that went. It's priceless. In fact, I discovered one of the U.S. presidents. His, his plan was every 15 minutes. Now some of us plan every 15 days. And also we have to stop this business of African time. And you're there as a Christian preaching that. No. 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 African time should be on time. Those are, those are some of the things keeping us behind. How? How? 
a whole Christian you there. They, they na, said 12 p.m. Na, that means is, one or two p.m. Is, but is a no. Neda. Next, adaptability and flexibility that I've talked about. E you know, deko, learn to change with the time. E don't, don't be too angry. E and here you are annoyed. We you look at you. You can do it. There is no public address system and you become annoyed. No. E, no it is what it is. No in your life. Yimbayo. You go, you reach home, you find you are expecting a genus. They are prepared beans and you become o annoyed. And you cause drama over no and, 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 and guys, please, part of you as a man, part of what makes you as a man is how to respond amid this stress. When things change, but you just over the ankle, you people, I don't understand. I'm here, I'm here, I'm so bad. You there, a whole man causing drama. And part of what I see that kills the Christian community is not offering enough recognition. Recognition and prayer and support and appreciation and especially prayer to our leaders in the Christian service. But we are so quick We are so quick To criticize So quick I get shocked That the Christian They are so quick to criticize Can you have you seen Have you seen how they How could you not do that Please remember pastors Or whoever it is The elders They are also human like you They have the same challenges like you So they need If anything They need more prayers And support this was not part of, this, that's not part of work life balance these are things that God in the moment tells me someone needs to hear this yeah. and, and some of us zao. needed to hear that and by the way don't tell me who but I can see how your nose moves then I can tell mm. this one <laughs> the other key thing is Communication, you need to learn how to communicate, how to well, talk you to know people. Be be because too. how you communicate to people is going to impact your personal life, your professional life, your business life, your family life. If you're a bad communicator, you're not going to live a happy life. Well, that no, I can guarantee you. Kataleko, business yo, namakago, naba, naba, nemikwa, no so planning, we've already talked about that. Teka, teka, then resilience. Kwe my first mentor, the late Dr. Gerard Serwaji, told me, he said, I have what I call bounce back ability. And that's one of the core abilities we need as men to survive and thrive. thrive. I'm a soccer fan. I'm an Arsenal fan. Please don't think that I asked him to stand there, to sit there. So apparently, so apparently the coach of Arsenal, Ateta, that part of what he looks out for is when a player makes, when a, player makes a mistake, he wants to look at their body language. Are they crushed like, oh, oh they say, oh, sorry, but then... Put put head up. Up. You say, what next? You move on. No, you you move yo. forward. No, in in fact, so. there is a lady who sells products at uh, Hotel Africana. Well, She's been doing Africana. selling those products for so many years. That, Aba, some of you have gone for conferences there. You must have seen Aba, her. So one time she stopped me and said, you know what, Ethan? Rumi, you Ethan. taught me so that if you hear a no well, from a prospect, rather than be discouraged, in your brain, you should tell yourself, Next! That's bounce back ability. Today's setback is a setup for tomorrow's comeback. And sometimes we go through certain things, certain situations, 
to toughen us, to strengthen us, to make us stronger, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially strong, because God knows that the bigger territory you are asking for requires mental resilience, requires emotional resilience, requires spiritual resilience. So ladies and gentlemen, my encouragement to you is do not just crash and get, just say, God, give me the grace, give me the strength, show me what I'm supposed to get out of this to go and become a better person. Because you don't know what God has in you. In that circumstance, you're being prepared. You're being prepared. All this metal you're seeing, it had to go through some fires. Mm. But sometimes you see fire, you step into it, you're like, hey! oh, go see Jack Genda. You, you, ref, you run away from fire, but meanwhile, you're running away from your preparation. Hallelujah. You're running away from school. So your job is not to run away. Your job, your job is to look at it and say, huh, God, help me to, show, to learn from this, mm. to go through this, to become better. That's that will help us to survive the time. Constructive consistency. Always, always be the kind that is always doing something positive. If, not just focusing on the negative. Give him a bottle of water. <laughs> and a round of applause, another round of applause. <laughs> I like this man. So I came up with this formula recently, which I believe is very useful for us. Because part of what kills work-life balance stress. stress. Have you ever noticed that when you're stressed, you get easily irritated, you easily get angry, you easily get, you know, the wires get off quickly. Have you ever noticed that? Does that happen to some of us? Yes or no? Yeah. So, F. Can someone guess what F stands for? F. Forgive. So Forgive self and others. This, re this removes poison out of your system. You see, when you don't forgive, because of bad things that have happened or someone caused, it's just like carrying this thing here. Like it's tied on you. Let's just suppose I have a rope tied to this. And you have a dream to go towards that screen. No, like yeah. So because this thing is heavy on you, you will struggle to get to your destination. Because you, every time you turn, you remember, eee, he hurt me. Oh, oh she no. hurt me. Anyanyiza. Oh, but how could he? Nyayenga achikola inzatia. But why me? Wachichaba kunze. But surely God, why me? Nyayema zimada na mkama lwa My whole mother. Hey. My whole father. Tata wangeye na mama wange. Meanwhile, the years are passing. Ye miaka jita ambula. Okulondo the years are passing. Ye miaka jita ambula. But with forgiveness. You let this monitor go. And then you walk towards you. Faster. Mm -hmm. When you forgive, it's not just even the other person knowing. You forgive for your own benefit. As your own gift. To you. Because not forgiving, you're hurting yourself. Of course, in a way, you're hurting the other person. But also Christ told us that forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. This is what I mean. I be, this is what I believe. Part of what Christ meant is some people come to hurt you, but they don't know that they are hurting themselves. Because Hebrew says that do not fool yourselves. You reap what you sow. So these guys forgive. So some of these people forget that. So someone 
comes to hurt you. They're like, eh, namulaze. Namulaze. Mm. But they don't know that they are going to reap ten times. That's one aspect. The other side of forgiving is how many of us you said something and you felt it was a simple comment. And you walked away. Weeks, months down there was like, that guy hurt me. That lady hurt me. And you're like, huh? I'm so sorry. I never meant that. Has that ever happened to any of us? Yes. Yeah. So in the same way, you never know. Someone could have hurt you without bad intentions. Even if they had good intentions, but somehow it hurt you. So forgive me. But this is what I know. For years I used to hear forgive, forgive. But the question is how? So in the year 2002, Two, I came across a concept. It was by a guy called Tom Polly. He well, taught me something. Tom Polly, he, he, he taught me a concept called the forgiveness letter. Na, 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 so, 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 gentlemen, I don't know whether we have some ladies here. There is. I'm giving you an assignment. For whoever has hurt you tonight, go get a piece of paper and write a letter. Write all the things that you felt hurt. Say, you did this to me. You can swear if you want to swear. Uh -huh. And then at the end, you say, I choose to let this injury to be over for me now. I forgive you. I bless you. If you, if you are comfortable enough, you can say, I love you. If you, feel, if you don't feel it, but I'll say, God bless you. Just say, I love you. Then once you're done, go burn the letter. Strike a match, a match mm. and um, burn the letter. So that burns away that energy, that negative energy. I, 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 that will make a big, big difference. I had a huge issue in my family. I was even excommunicated. But, you know, I use that and it worked like magic. I usually use it even for my private coaching clients. I coach people on personal career development and it has worked like magic. The second... P is pray. Pray for self and others. This is fuel for powerful transformation. Again, I'm talking about those people who are hurting you. Who are a, a pain in the neck, so to speak. Some of us use other words like a pain in the whatever part you may mm. think about. Mm. So, pray for them. This is why. One of the reasons is, Hurting people hurt people. Someone who is happy with their life, um, they are very balanced, they are not going to hurt you. For um, what? Um, they are enjoying um, their life. Um, um, if, 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 yeah, so, when you see someone here crash, clashing with people, there is something. There is something going on in their life. And second, as Christians, you can relate to this. Sometimes you don't know what forces are acting in that person's life. And they need deliverance. But unfortunately, sometimes even in churches, like, we start cursing such people. No, they need your prayers. And finally, is bless self. Bless bless we were at a married fellowship, our marriage fellowship, our married self. And yeah. what someone said, but should I still bless my husband when they have uh, annoyed me several times? Like, absolutely. Your job is to bless, to share good energy, positive energy. That's your job. Bless. Bless. Your job is to forgive, to heal, and to bless. The rest you leave it up to God. Here are some emotions to avoid, to have better work-life balance. Anger. 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 Criticism. That kolokotalism is dangerous. 
judgment. Because you don't know. Now you might see the two of us here. Looking this slender. And some of you are judging. Do those men eat? Did they have lunch? The money they earn, what do they use it for? But you don't know why God created us this way. That's, that's how he can manage to speak for hours. Yes. And I haven't even seen any water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a man. So judgment. So be careful to judge. Because you don't know what is going on in their life again. You don't know why they are using what they are using. You don't know what God is preparing for them. You don't know why they are going through a certain journey and period. That could be their school time. God is teaching them something. The other one is condemnation. Be wary of condemnation. Always. Irritation like. Something written saying the guy you are mixing, that guy knows mm -hmm. you, are, you irritates me and you're irritated. But tell you what, this, I remember the fruits of the spirit. None of the, none of that on this on the list is mm. a fruit of the spirit. Those, that's what the enemy uses. I learned recently that the enemy uses some of the, so apart from that. You know, sex, drugs, alcohol, and these negative emotions. You, the you enemy you knows how to use those. Those. So be very careful. So where you feel irritated, ask for God's grace to calm you down. So I want to give, so I want to give you what I call the PEMS model. To PEMS model. Mm. You've heard this, but I'm just giving you a cool acronym to remember. Say PEMS. Gamma PEMS. Say PEMS. 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 The first P is physical. E chisoka P ye ya physical. Ya mobili. Chirabu hako. And when I say physical, bengamati e physical. You can look at it as health in general. One, it's things like sleep. Sleep. Okwebaka. If you have very little sleep, then you, you will not be productive. You will easily get it. Exercise. Like I wasn't exercising, like I'd missed the last couple of two months or so, I wasn't for one reason or the other. And like the last three. So like on Sunday, I walked as part of the, uh, I have a good friend of my best friend actually, he's called Joseph Beyanga. Anyone familiar with Joe Walker? Yeah, so so he's my best friend. So when he was when he was going to the Bushenyi trip, I was exercising a little more. So I, I walked the three on the three days, and the first day, like sixth day, and the last day, it was 100 plus kilometers. And I was fairly okay. But this last Sunday, they were doing 60 kilometers around Kampala. So I decided to walk the first round, the first 10 kilometers, and the last 10. And, and I noticed that by, by the first end, because my pace was used to, to, I was doing two hours for 10 kilometers. They did, but they were pushing so fast that we did 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers in one and a half hours. So, so, so that, those of you walk, you know that's a very fast pace. So then on the last, so I thought that by the last round, Joseph would be tired. And me, I went home, took a nap, you know, came back. Man, that guy was going even faster. And then now you have to climb through Kololo, then Naguru. Man, I had to even do some prayers while walking and keep up. And because he's my best friend, I have to keep up with his pace. But by the time I was home, I was feeling pains all over the place. Because I was not super Fit. Today I swear, today I, I, I was feeling like, you see my bam bams are not heavy, eh? Eh, they are not big, eh? but, eh, but eh, I was walking feeling like my bam bams were heavy. Eh? Eh, you, That's when I knew fitness is a serious thing. <laughs> <laughs> Physical. You know, 
please, now the last, you know, I exercised yesterday, even today. Now I'm feeling much, much better. So I want, to keep the, I want to keep the pace again. Because it helps big time. The other thing also is something as simple as going to the dentist. So recently I had an issue that... Then I discovered I had spent three years without going to the dentist. But I was hearing. So I went, and then they discovered that they actually had to remove one of my wisdom teeth at the bottom. Now, now, when they remove one, now, when they remove one wisdom tooth, they also have to remove the other one. The the pair. Pair. Because one country, I mean, it, it, they work in pairs. It is a challenging experience and all that. You know, mm. I had to spend without eating food. That's how I ended up with the dry tea, with the dry lips. Because, because I, could, I could not even uh, take food properly and all this. So I was like, you know what? This is what happens. When you don't take care of challenges quickly, but they come back to haunt you. Please, please. please. Because for me, I want to teach from my successes and failures. Eat, eat properly. But yep. you're there, you go somewhere and say, you see someone eating a whole Mount Renzori on their plate. No, eat no more food. The other one is mental. The other side is mental. Psychology. How you think. Be positive. If something happens, ask yourself, what is good about this? What am I learning from this? How can I take this to the next level? Okay, good. I thought I was the only big fan for soccer. So the mentors, and part of mentor is what are you consuming? Are you reading positive literature, the Bible, and, and books about leadership, communication, or you're just listening to negative news? Because that's going to affect your psychology. And that, and, and that will weaken you. By the way, when you're, when you're thinking negatively, science shows that your body goes weak. I can demonstrate to you if we had enough time. You think a positive thought, your body goes weak. You think, a pos eh? you think a negative thought, your body goes weak. You think a positive thought like love, your body goes strong. Next, emotional. How you manage how your feelings. Minimize drama. Part of emotions is also family. By the way, today is my birthday. I really struggled. I was like, I have cake at home. But then I had to speak here. But then I was like, you know what? I was, my, my purpose on earth is to speak, not to eat cake. But I want to go quickly and celebrate my birthday with my family. When I come, I have, I have two beautiful girls. <laughs> I like this man. Ekodeo, please remind me, we will arrange to get uh, a book of public speaking and I, we give it to this man. Eh? Okay. Like <laughs> it. Mm -hmm. Two things. One, recently I was at school. My, my, my firstborn is in uh, P4. So I'm working, and, and they were arranging a, a breakfast for men. Because they say that men were not participating in the lives of their children. By the way, if you're a man, you participate in the lives of your child. When there are events, and all that, please. How many of us have daughters? Any of us with the daughters? Okay, you see, to build confidence in a woman, in a girl, eight, eight to ninety percent chance of a woman with low confidence and self-esteem, according to research, it means they didn't have a good relationship with their father. So, so as a father, you have a solid, solid reason. I mean, foundation to influence. So, so anyhow, this lady, the one of the administrators was briefing me. Say, hey, we have a breakfast for men. You know, for you. So they can get involved in the children's lives. And, uh, you know, men are not participating in children's and, lives. And, and my 
nine year old was like, no, they do. She was holding on to me, no, they do. So what, what she was saying, is that, what are you talking about? Have you understood the, the reasoning? It's like, what are you talking about that men, mine does? Because for her, she said, they do. That's all she knows. She knows that men participate in children's lives. Because I'm always there. Whether it is a dance or swimming or what, I'm there. And that made me feel so good. That made me feel so good. You know, and, and, and so when they are going to sleep every night, I have to tell them a bedtime story. Daddy, come and tell us a bedtime story. I tell them a bedtime story. Good night. Love you. Like, love you, daddy. God bless you. God bless you. Because I did not hear the word I love you my whole life. When I, I struggle to tell a woman I love you in my late 20s, I struggled because no one told me I love you. And I was trying to tell Am I communicating? So when I see girls come, you know, my daughter, like last night, my, my, my four-year-old held me, and she was kissing me by the cheek. Hey. Daddy, love you. Daddy, Can Emotions. But you can't do that if I'm not engaging them also. And then finally, spiritual. This one, I don't need to, I'm sure your pastors are always telling you now. So look at this as like the, the chair. That chair has four legs. If one of them is broken, the chair can't function. So the, I wanted to use this as a model for work-life balance because I believe it's a very easy model for you to learn. So, the tone where your routine acts, that no one on their deathbed ever said, I wish I had spent more time at office. That be a prioritizer, not a procrastinator. Find out what matters most. And then that will make you that will make a big difference. So, before we wrap up, I want you to turn to your immediate neighbor. Look at them mufuni. in their eyes. What did, what did you find most useful and how are you going to use it in your life to have work-life balance? Those of you who are watching live uh, Ma online, TV, yafe, those who are watching YouTube, online, just go ahead. Type in the chat box. What did you find most useful in this presentation? And what are you going to do differently? And, and, and of course, if you like this, please share it with other people. Please share it with other people. Comment, share it with other people. Like it. When you like it, it will be easily shared with other people. So, you have 30 seconds, go. Okay, good. Are you finished sharing? So now look at your neighbor and tell them, please, I've heard your promises. I'll be watching you. And I'm watching you. And even God had you. <laughs> so tell them, God, so help us, God. Give yourselves a round of applause. So just to let you know that I also do coaching in case you're interested. Bo -bo. I coach people in executive communication, so public speaking, to, career transition, bo -bo. Bo -bo. Bo -bo. oral interview bo -bo. success, bo -bo. person and career bo -bo. development. Bo -bo. Bo -bo. And those are my numbers. Bo -bo. Bo -bo. Or you can go to, 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 can go to ethanomussolini.com for slash coaching. Uh. Uh, then the other thing, I'll put that back. But also, if you want, I also run something every Thursday for free. Mm. So if you want to, you Uli go to ethanmussolini.com for slash live, mm. like 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mm. You can sign up uh, on that. It's free. You just enter your name and email. Then every time I have a segment on personal and career development, you receive the link where you can access these details. Uh, yeah. Then at Success Africa, we do different things like team building, leadership management, change management, effective communication, customer care, stress management, and other talks. 
and you can go to success-africa.com. That's our company. We are at uh, Impala House where we do these trainings. I would also encourage you to go to succeedingdaily.com uh, because I have, I did over 50 training programs two years ago. I was planning to sell it for like for 500 to to $1,000 and God told me to give away everything for free. So I have 50 hours on that website. Thank you very much. Yeah, so it isn't because I was too generous. I was just being obedient. <laughs> so God told me. So you just need to go to succeedingdaily.com. Mm. Then you access that for free. And yeah. So let's stand. 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 So let us declare these things together. Say, I choose to be a leader in my life. In my career. In my career. And wherever I am. And wherever I am. To be a demonstration. To be a demonstration. A, a good case. A good case. For God. For God. Exemplary. Exemplary. God. God. Dear God, dear God, help me, help me to be exemplary, to be exemplary in all that I do, in all that I to do, be a mega success, to be a mega success, just like a sun presence wherever I am, <laughs> to be a blessing wherever I am, to be a blessing that wherever I am, people feel your blessings that wherever I am, be to, be to be a great channel of your blessings, of your, your divine wisdom, of Maybe. your divine love, be of your divine love. abundance. Yes. Say I'm a great leader. I'm a great leader. Give Woo. yourself your know, applause. So may the good Lord bless you. May God's love and light and blessings go ahead of you to harmonize every place condition such that God's divine love and divine, and divine appointment is done in your life wherever you are. Thank you so much. May the good Lord bless you in whatever you do. Thank you so much. Amen. Can we sing happy birthday to Ethan? Happy birthday, happy birthday, dear Italy. Happy birthday, man. I've never, I've never received such a birthday present like that. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> come on, men of Revelation, let's celebrate Ifa one more time. Woo! Come on, come on, come on, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.